The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the uh, German DAX like we usually do. As you can see, we have a potential for a little bottom coming in here in the German DAX. And if we take over the pond just a little bit farther, we will take a look here at the FTSE. We'll get this up here and take a look at it. Hold on one second. And we'll have uh, Stan Harley will be our guest. At the break, folks, that's always good. So we'll have a lot of fun uh, doing that. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this chart of the FTSE, folks. This had a big gap here uh, on the 16th. You know, we filled that gap, and now we're coming down. There's a slight three drive to a bottom pattern there on the FTSE. But this chart is looking pretty badly. And the main reason is you'll see that three drive to a top pattern that happened on the 23rd. So that's a very important thing to look at. So uh, the main thing is, you know, yesterday we looked at that NASDAQ uh, pattern that was completing on the daily basis. It it, it worked pretty well. And, uh, you know, we were having big divergences between the Dow Jones and the S&P. And, folks, let me let me give you a, a couple of, of numbers here. I, you know, I talk about the open interest quite a bit. But. The open interest in the S&P uh, going back over the last seven days was roughly around 3.2 million. Now we're at um, 2.6 million. We lost 600,000 contracts when the market was going straight up. Folks, that's short covering. Uh, there's no other way to describe it. You know, that's uh, that's exactly what's happened. And it's also the same thing in the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, and the Russell. All of them lost open interest. So this was not, uh, this was just a short covering rally that we've had over these last eight days. Uh, and I'm just looking at the open interest. I mean, I'm watching the patterns too, but those are just some of the things that you have to, to, to look at. Remember, uh, I, I don't look at fundamentals. I don't look at, you know, any oscillators or anything. I just look at market feedback and what the pattern's doing. And when I try to get that, that's what gives me the slight edge that you have when you're trading. You know, yesterday was a was a very good day because we had the top of the gold market pretty nicely and the NASDAQ worked pretty good. And uh, also the crude oil was working pretty good. But not all the times do those things work. You know, the, the key is that, uh, you know, you got to pick the ones that work the best and that's it. If you have any questions this morning, it's 877 927 6648 We've got a, a question here from Bob. A huge corn crop coming with no demand. Yeah, uh, most negative corn market in 15 to 20 years. The funds have been short for months. Yes, there is a huge short position. Now, we have a position on in wheat. Uh, right now, uh, it had a seven cent profit. Now it has a two cent loss. We're risking, we're only risking on that trade uh, around 300. No, well, it's $250. So I, I don't know, but that that's not unusual for to have crops having really bad uh, reports because look what's happened to corn. You know, it's been going down quite a bit. Now, I will wait till after the uh, the uh, report comes out before I, you know, look to buy it. I'm already I'm already long the wheat because it's a pattern in there that looked pretty good. You know, it did have an eight cent profit in it at one time, but we were looking for more. So you've got to keep uh, keep your plan working. But that's that's basically, uh, you know, what I'm looking at. Okay, let's. Uh, Terry's asking a question about the cocoa, and let's just take a look at that. There's another one that looks interesting on the futures, and that is the um, the coffee. But let's take a look at cocoa here. Yes, ah, uh, here we go. I don't know where this was one that uh, we've got a possibility. Let's get the cocoa up so we can see it. I haven't traded cocoa, and oh my gosh. It's pretty good. If you can see the you know beautiful ABCD patterns. Now I don't know if we've taken out 2,200 uh, yet. If we've taken out 2,200 and didn't collapse from there, that could be a double bottom. Uh, 
So, um, Bob, let me see who said that about the cocoa. Terry, tell me what the last price is on the cocoa, because uh, if it just takes out the 2200 by just a little bit and then turns, that could be a nice uh, double bottom pattern. So remind ourselves that that's what we have to be looking at. Hold on here a second, and we'll get that up to take a quick look at it. Let me uh, let me review. <laughs> Boy, I have to tell you something, folks. You know, most of you that know me and you, you and, and subscribe to my stuff, you get stuff. It's holding up. Yeah, as long as it can stay above that 2200 the cocoa will be pretty good. <laughs> One of the things that... Uh, uh, that the, you know, you get stuff from me all through the night because I get up a lot and I check the prices and if something looks good, I send it through or whatever. So I watch it. But last night, last night, folks, I slept eight hours. I mean, I, I, I went to bed at nine thirty and I woke up ten minutes before the show was supposed to start. So I'm not. I don't have my usual uh, charts up that I usually look at. So if you have any questions like the cocoa and stuff like that, uh, please bring it on. Hold on a second here. My mouth's a little dry. Ah, nothing like a little H2O to get your heart beating. Okay, if you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Let's take a look. Uh, Marshall's asking a question about the Sahara dust. You know, that happens all the time, but I, I don't know anything about it. But I will ask Rich. Uh, I haven't talked to him about something like that. But, uh, I, you know, I'm just looking at the charts. You know, as you know, Marshall, I don't really follow the news. I happen to see that because we, we're going to have our hottest day of the year here in Tucson at 108. And uh, the Mount Lemmon behind us is still burning. So we've got a lot of smoke in the air. So the air quality is uh, not usually usually as good as it is here, but we'll take a quick look at this coffee here in just a second because I think this is one that's going to have a chance for a pretty good bottom. And the reason why it – hold on just a second. Shut the front door. All right, let me get this up here. Okay, one, two. Yeah, it is a dry heat. Yeah, this <laughs> – <laughs> and believe me, it's it's definitely hot. You'll see, look at this. You see, we had this uh, really nice 135 pattern in coffee. We got a nice rally from 106 up to 114, and then boom, this big A, B, C, D down. Uh, I don't know if coffee's going to hold the 94 or not. I haven't checked the price recently, but uh, we'll take a look at it uh, later on. Um, Okay. Oh, we got a. Oh, here we go. We got some good questions here from. Uh, got a question from Paul. When you're reading candlestick patterns, you include data outside your regular trading hours. Yes, I do. I watch uh, because of the 24-hour trading. I do watch it. it. A lot of times, there's not much going on, but there's actual trading there, and sometimes it's quite significant. Um, and, you know, because we see these markets top sometime at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, New York time, and uh, you have to look at that because if you're if you're a technician, you need all the data you can get. So I do watch the overnight data. Uh, I don't necessarily trade off of it, but I watch it very very closely because it'll you get completed patterns there. Very much a perfect example of that, folks, was last night when we had the completed pattern in gold at uh, seventeen, you know, ninety six. You know, we were looking for it to. Break above 1792. It did. Stayed above 96 for maybe 20 minutes, and then you know down she went. She dropped uh, 30, more than 32 dollars. So we'll take a break here, and we'll talk about the QQQ 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, I've been asked to review this uh, QQQ or the NASDAQ uh, yesterday. Uh, if you remember here, we were looking at that uh, potential uh, a, B, C, D uh, pattern. It's a three drive to a top pattern. It was absolutely perfect within 40 points of something that's trading at 10,300. The high was uh, 10,286, I believe. Uh, very, very close to that. It was a 1.618 expansion of the high that we had back on the uh, 21st. Perfect A, B, C, D. You couldn't ask for anything better. You didn't have to pick a top there. Uh, this was one of the things that we did point out to you. Now, this is a 30-minute chart. And as you'll see, the market came down. And right during market hours is when it made that Gartley. We were putting that up. You see, that's that secondary pattern there. And that's the one that we posted in the room to watch it very, very closely. Because if it didn't get above 10,230, uh, 10,230, <laughs> 10, it had a possibility uh, to go to the downside. And as you can see, it had a pretty good break. It rallied up to 10,220, which made it a perfect 135 pattern. We actually posted that one in the room yesterday, too. And then from there, it fell down. And the $64 question that someone asked yesterday, where does it go from here? Well, you have to let the market give you the feedback. And the market's giving you a little bit of feedback overnight. You look at the overnight low that we had, which was lower than we had during the day session yesterday. We made a slightly lower low at 90. 900. That's down well over 400 points. And look where the rally. The rally took you up to 10,050. Now, that's a 382 retracement of the whole move down. Now, that's very important. I know right now it's trading about 10,000, roughly 10,010. But if this thing can break above 10,060 with some power, it's going to complete another A, B, C, D pattern uh, right up around the uh, 61% retracement of 10,120. 
or 10,140. Either one of those two numbers would be something that you're looking at. That's what that's what a technician's supposed to do. You don't have to listen to the news or anything. Just watch what the darn chart's telling you to do. Does it work all the time? Shucks, no, but nothing else does either. So that's the edge that you're trying to get when you're looking at some of these things. You know, it's, it's nothing more or less like that. The same thing was happening in the gold market yesterday. I mean, we this was something that we brought out in the newsletter. And, you know, sometimes these things work. Sometimes they don't but the gold market was was really trying to tell us here let's get this up here so you'll be able to to see it here because we went up to make this high hold on i get this up here and uh we'll be able to see this very clearly You'll see here, we were, at once the market exceeded that 17,066, we went all the way up and took out the highs from way back in April, which was a, the larger ABCD pattern that started on, you know, June the 7th. We went up, we had a beautiful Gartley pattern, stopped at 1704, or, excuse me, 1706, and we missed that one because we were trying to buy at 1704. We missed it by a couple of dollars, and that ABCD pattern took us up to new highs at 1792 and the high was 1796 and the market broke uh 32 dollars well, a little more than 32 dollars in the last two days and that that gives us some information too that tells us that you know we've made uh the harmonic number in gold is uh 32 and we made the first harmonic number to the downside so you have to see the same thing that you're looking at in the gold market you have to do the same thing in the in the nasdaq so once you do them both because all the markets act the same every single one of them if you took off the the price action or the price scale and the uh, uh, the data scale you would not be able to even tell what the what the what the chart would be I, we did a test with that with John Murphy once down in Texas at one of these uh, money shows and I happened to be on the thing and they they put up the charts and uh, it was someone was arguing about what the trend of the market is and John Murphy answered the first question and it was a perfect answer and he says well what what is the time frame that you're looking at because if you're looking at the time frame in the stock market over the last, uh, you know, three months, uh, what would you say it would be? Well, it's it's still down a little bit. How about over the last 10 days? It's up. How about over the last two days? It's down. So you have to know what the time frame is in order to determine the trend. So when someone tells you they're trading with the trend, you got to say, oh, what time frame are you trading it on? Because that's what really counts. Folks, I've done a lot of work with um, moving averages many, many years ago, and, and the thing that really turned it for me is when I worked at Commodity Corporation because uh, the, the moving averages didn't mean anything. What meant something to the people at uh, Commodity Corporation was the volatility and the volatility breakout. When there was something that exploded out of a certain area, that's when they were trying to uh, – in fact, that's what their whole program was about. Uh, it was – you know, they took the stuff that Amos Hostetter had used and Jay Cross worked with Amos and so he knew pretty much what they were doing. They looked at all these different types of oscillators and moving averages but what they found was the fact that when that volatility kicked in that's when you really wanted to start looking at the markets and that's you know what what the same thing happens in everything so you have to narrow down what are you going to use you know i can't look at all these reports for two reasons a i don't understand it that's the main thing and two there's so darn many of them there's just no way that i could possibly possibly keep up with it so hold on here a second we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here in arizona because of the f fires and stuff so we've uh, had a little bit of an uh problem with internet connections uh, through the night, I was told just a second ago. So we're going to hopefully we'll get Stan Harley on here uh, at the break to, uh, you know, to take a look at it. The other thing, you know, talking about market feedback, we'll get this uh, get this up here because this was the one that we were looking at uh, in the silver over the weekend, you'll see here that we had this one three five pattern in here, and you know the silver could not even take out point three when gold was expanding to the one point two seven number. This was extremely negative to silver, and silver broke from uh, I think eight twenty six, eighteen twenty six. The last time I saw it was around sixteen fifty, but uh, that was telling you that that market was giving you some feedback that maybe the overall pattern in the uh, gold at uh, gold and silver was not bullish as the you know the people on the tube were trying to tell you and that's pretty much uh, uh, the way that happened there was another bit of information I think that we had on that if I have it correctly 
Uh, nope, I don't have it in that one. Sorry about that, boys and girls. But anyway, we'll uh, we'll cover that a little bit a little bit later. The other thing that that I think is important here is this Treasury bond market. We'll get this up here to take a look at it. And that is that, you know, we're still we're looking at higher interest rates here, folks, not lower interest rates. Uh, they've already given up, or at least that's what someone said on Bloomberg the other day, that they've given up on negative interest rates. Well, <laughs> that's a really good thing to give up on because that thing doesn't make any sense to me at all. But that's that's my two cents worth. So if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. And I appreciate all the questions coming in this morning. And if I can answer them, I certainly will will. And if I can't, I'll make something up. All right, let's move on and uh, take a quick look at what these markets are doing so I can update. Uh, we've got uh, the break coming up, but I want to see how the markets are acting because the opening is so very, very important. We're still trading at that uh, 10,400 or 10,004 for the NASDAQ. And the S&P is down quite a bit trading at uh, 3035. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on the line. Stan, are you there? Good morning, Larry. I'm doing well. 
Well, I hope so. We're having our hottest day of the year here in Tucson today at 108. So you're probably a little bit warmer than that up there in uh, Phoenix, but uh, it's pretty hot. But are you seeing any of the fires that are up in the Phoenix area? You can probably see the uh, smoke and stuff, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I actually live in Scottsdale, which is a suburb on the northeast side of Phoenix. And yeah, we had some serious (laughs) fires here. Uh, really bad fires, yes. But they're starting to taper off. They're getting they're getting them under control, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it's going to be a cooker way. today. We're, we're going to have 111 here the, today. Oh, yeah. that's a, But it's a dry heat, as they say. It's a dry <laughs> heat, yes. You know, as long it's as, the as long Arizona as you know, we know and love. Yeah, as long as you don't go out uh, between 12 and 4, it's actually not too bad. But, uh, you know, do your stuff early in the morning, it's actually quite nice. But uh, it's a beautiful place. There's no question about it. And let's get talking about these markets. Stan, uh, you had a bearish stance the last time we talked, and the stock never made new highs in the S&P, the, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ did. You want to tell us what you're looking at now, my friend? Absolutely, and it, and I sent I emailed some charts to you a little while ago. If if you yeah, have the time, I got you might them want to click I, on them. I posted I posted them in there. You we're ready to go. Let's go. Then uh, the first thing, yes, I, I think we are in a topping evolution, uh, Larry. Um, I track uh, what what I refer to as a seven year cycle. It's actually uh, with my regression modeling, it's eighty two months, just a couple months shy of exactly seven years, and it's a very reliable cycle. Uh, that cycle last bottom in February of 2016. Uh, before that, it was March of 09. Before that, before that October 2002, and so on. Um, plus or minus a few months, uh, we tend to get standout uh, market lows. Of course, before you make a low, you've got to make a high. And I think we are in a topping evolution in that cycle now. Uh, unlike bottoms, which tend to be V-shaped or price shocks, one and done, sometimes a retest, uh, Topping evolutions are different. They tip, they typically span several months, maybe five, seven, eight months from start to finish. I look at what I call the big five. And for me, the big five uh, indices are the Dow Industrials, the Dow Transports, S&P 500, NASDAQ Composite, and New York Composite. And what I find is throughout this many months of the topping evolution, uh, we see initially all five of those make new all-time highs. Then a little while later, maybe only four, then maybe only three, then two, then one. And that's a fairly common pattern. Um, thus far, the uh, Dow Transports peaked out in uh, September of 2018. Uh, in January, I think we probably saw a high in the New York Composite. In uh, February, we probably saw the Dow and the S&P peak out. And the last uh, component among the big five to peak out, I believe, is the NASDAQ. And I think that's what's developing now. Uh, the second chart, uh, by the way, uh, is a chart of the S&P 500 at the last seven-year topping evolution. And as, uh, as one can see, when that chart comes up on the screen, the S&P uh, and, and the Dow topped in, uh, in May. Uh, but it wasn't for another two months that the NASDAQ topped out. And when the NASDAQ topped out on July 20th, the S&P topped on May 20th, by the way, two months prior, but the S&P and the Dow came within just a few ticks of taking out their May 20th high. And then, uh, as I said, the, the NAS was the final component among the big five, there it is, to make a new high. And that completed the topping structure. And from that point, the market rolled over. Larry, I see a very similar evolution now. Um, I see, just like in 2015, the NASDAQ, the last component among the big five to make a new all-time high. Uh, I think we have a little bit more to go, perhaps another week, uh, but uh, we're awfully, awfully close to what I think is probably going to be a, a final high in this market. Wow. It certainly appears that that's what same thing scenario that we have now uh, it, it was happening then because the NASDAQ did go up and make a substantially new high, but none of the others really did. So that's, yeah. uh, that's good market yeah, so feedback. I- and I think, there's a, I think we may have another week of this, and then, uh, and then I think we're finally done. Uh, another divergence that's very, very interesting, uh, the third chart I sent you, a lot of technicians focus on uh, the New York advanced decline line. I look at that. Um, a lot of them uh, are pointing out quite accurately that the advanced decline line is currently making a new all-time high, did just a few days ago. And a lot of technicians then make the following conclusion. They say, well, if the uh, advanced decline line is making a new high, therefore the Dow and the S&P should follow. And I say, no. <laughs> I say what one needs to do is look at the advanced decline line and compare it to the New York Composite Index. 
and look for signs of either confirmation or divergence. The New York composite topped out in January and is not even close to making a new high. There it is on the screen. And the advanced decline line is making a new high. What you have is a divergence. And those divergences can occur at bottoms. They can occur at tops. And that's what's happening now. So when you see a divergence like that, you've got to say, <laughs> what's wrong with this picture? Uh, that's telling us something is wrong. And, uh, and I believe uh, it's telling us a, a topping evolution is, is imminent. And I, I think we have <laughs> just a few more days to go. Uh, don't want to tr try to be too precise on the date here, but I think we are very, very close to a final high. When you see the NAS go to a new high, uh, nothing confirming, uh, and then roll over, then that's probably it, and we're probably headed south. And probably headed south uh, to the next 82-month uh, cycle bottom, which... Uh, my regression modeling points to the end of 2022. We typically go down, Larry, for between two and three years with two and a half back of the envelope math, about average. So if you take uh, the high right in here and add two and a half years, well, you get to the next 80 mo 82 month cycle bottom. Wow. Stan, we have a question for one of our listeners on the chart that you had the NASDAQ and the S&P. You have three moving average lines there. You got a blue, a green, and a red. Could you tell us uh, what you're looking at there and what those lines mean? Uh, they, uh, good question. And this kind of dovetails well with your earlier comments about 20 minutes ago about uh, trend. Uh, is the market going up? Well, it depends on the time frame. Uh, well, this, this cycle addresses that point you were just making. There, I've got three different moving averages on here. One is a 15-week. Uh, the other is a 50-week. That's in blue. And the red one is a 200-week. And uh, um, I find that all three of those tell a different story. The 15-week, by the way, I got that from Jerome Brezard, uh Walter Brezard's son. He follows mm -hmm. the 15, and uh, I, I think it does a good job of defining the shorter-term trend. A more intermediate term is defined by the blue one, the 50-week, and the longer-term trend is defined by the 200. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, certainly back in 2015, that chart that we were looking at, the, the, they were rolling over, and we're looking at a similar evolution now in the current market. Wow. Well, that's really cool. You know, the reason I live here in Tucson is two reasons. One, my cousin lived here, but the main reason was I used to come down and visit Teresa and uh, Walt Bressert all the time when Jerome was just a little a little shaver, and I used to come here to visit him all the time, and I liked it so much that when I moved out of California, I, this is where I came, and that's why I'm here, and uh, it was a lot of, that's well, when he ran HAL Commodity Cycles, you know, <laughs> that was, uh, you know, and everybody thought it was named, you know, HAL actually meant high and low. High and low. That, Yes. Yeah, everybody yes. thought it was a dog, but no, it, it was uh, it was high and low. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, buddy, and we'll have you on again in a few weeks. And uh, stay safe up there, and uh, don't go out when it's too hot, partner. Understood. My pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. We'll be right back, folks. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, by the way, folks, if you do want to see Stan's charts and you're not happen to be in the TFN uh, uh, listening live uh, right now, if you're waiting for later, if you're archiving this, just drop me a line and I'll email those charts to you. It's Larry Pesavento at gmail.com, and then we will have them. So hopefully you'll be able to get them. Now we're going to take a look here at the natural gas. Folks, if you'll remember a couple days ago, we've been watching this natural gas quite a bit. If you'll notice the low that we made back on the 15th of June, and we rallied up uh, seven days virtually with no rally. All we, we could not even make a 382 retracement of the high that we made, you know, way back on uh, uh, the June 1st. That, that's extremely bearish action. And look where we are today. We're trading at 161, and that tells us that we're going to go a lot lower. So what we're waiting for in this is we're waiting for that large ABCD pattern that started back on May the 4th. We came down. It made a perfect Gartley. You see up there, ABCD uh, right at 707, which is a heartbeat away from 0.618. Then that ABCD pattern takes you down into the 1.46 area. So we're, we could be 17 points away. And believe me, natural gas moves very fast. So it's not unusual for to do that because it's been lower than that. If you looked at it on long-term charts, so we're, we're watching this one for, you know, a really significant bottom now. If it if it turns from here and, and doesn't go down and we get above the 175, then yes, that'll tell us that this is probably getting ready, you know, to go up. But right now we're waiting for lower prices. Look at the trend. I mean, my goodness, since May, since May 4th, this puppy's been going straight down, and uh, until that turns, there's no reason to try to catch a falling knife. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying to catch a falling knife, but it's better for the knife to hit the ground and then, you know, do the first pattern afterwards. That's what we were doing at doing when we were looking at the NASDAQ yesterday. You know, we weren't trying to pick a top up there. We just saw a major ABCD pattern in the NASDAQ and then decided, yeah, here's a very, very low risk. Now, this morning, you'll notice that we talked about that 10000 2050 level in the NASDAQ is being very important, and you can see it right now. We're 100 handles lower than that right now. Now, if we can turn and get above 10,050, then the NASDAQ has changed its course, and it's probably going to rally some more. So that's all you're doing when you're watching these things. You're trying to get some market feedback of what you think is going to happen. And you're, you know... <laughs> I do a lot of trading, folks, but, you know, I always try to narrow it down to what I think is going to be the easiest thing to look at. And that's that's all I'm trying to do. So with the with the natural gas, you know, after that little 
that little tiny rally of about seven days where it went absolutely nothing. My gosh, it was screaming that uh, it was uh, not, you know, not going to go anywhere. Now we saw the same thing in the wheat. You know, we have beautiful pattern in the wheat, rallies uh, 10, 12 cents, and here it is back down to new lows. And if you get stopped out, your farming business is over, and you go on to the next one. But you could, you've raised your stop now, so your your risk on this is only two hundred fifty dollars on the uh, wheat. Let's see what it's doing this morning so far. Well, we're only out of penny and a half, so it still should be okay. Now, you can see the NASDAQ right now is trading at 99.33. We had that low over low, excuse me, the, over, the overnight low was at uh, right at uh, 98.95. If we go below that, that's telling you you're looking at probably a, th a three-day correction. You know, yesterday was day one. This is two. The three-day correction would be coming in on Friday, and that will be uh, a reversal week because you had a higher high and you closed very badly, and that would not be a very good sign in the NASDAQ on the long-term, you know, weekly charts. We've got the s and Tree trading at 30.18, and uh, I believe that we're heading way down uh, on that particular thing for, for quite a bit, so we'll, we'll watch it very very closely but again we we really don't know which of these is going to be you know the best to uh, take a look at but we'll, we'll follow those as we go through the crude oil i think has made a pretty good top up there at that 4163 level we had the same thing yesterday in the crude oil with that number we were looking at was at uh, 40 uh, 4020 uh, in the august crude and uh, right now we're trading at 3781 and it's uh it's got a really interesting pattern here i'll show you folks in just a second here we'll get it up to take a look at it this is a combination let's just get this here so we can see it here this is a combination of the uh, ai program you can see the overnight uh, weakness in the uh, market. That's the blue line is the uh, European market uh, time, and then the red happens to be the S and P. So the thing that and this only works about seven out of ten times. But watch, watch 10:30 this morning, folks, because if this is correct, we should be making some type of a top in crude oil around the 10:30 level. Now, whether is it going to do that or not, I don't know. But all I'm doing is I'm just looking at something that says, hey, this may or may not happen. And if it happens, then I have a possibility to do it. But if it's way, way lower or way higher than that at that time, then this pattern is not there. And you really can't, you can't do anything with it. So that's the whole the whole premise of what you're trying to do now over the past seven or eight years i've tried to get this automated and i've never found anybody that was able to automate it for me but i still am looking i'm still working with john and howard errington on it to try to line it up to make it an automatic situation that when that red line starts to go up you look for a buy and when the red line starts down you look for a sell and that's what the whole program is all about it's it's based on uh, two minute charts and if you go over the last uh, 60 days uh, it gives you every single thing that could happen in a market in a two-minute chart over the last 60 days and believe me it has nothing to do with anything's going on in the world this is all about numbers there's nothing there other than the numbers so remember that 877-927-6648 i have a I think i have a question in here someone asked me about uh okay someone's asking about the s p today what it's going to do i'll give you a rough idea here boys and girls so just give me one second, and I'll I'll give you my two cents worth. But because uh, this market has been quite a bit, ah, uh -huh, there we go. I think we have a pretty good idea. Oh, this we've got something really cool coming up. Bear with me here, boys and girls. We're gonna see a test the old uh, idea to see if it's gonna work, and we will get it ready here. Oh dear, yeah. Oh, we got something to pay attention to here today. This will be really interesting here. Okay, hold on. We have a little session here. We'll get this up and see it. This is the prediction for the S&P. As you can see, we have two bottoms forming, one at 10.15 uh, Eastern time, the other one at uh, roughly uh, 11.45 to 12 o'clock. The, the, real, the real key is you'd like to see the uh, – you'd like to see that low at uh, – 12, 11.45, you'd like to see that one a little bit higher than the low that should come in at around 10.15. Now, that's what this is what this is showing. Now, remember, this is a, it's a probability base. In other words, this thing has looked at patterns over the last 60 days, and it, it, it asks itself, okay, what happened on day three? What happened on day 23? What happened on day four? When they line up, then it gives you a 
a forecast of what this day should possibly be. And that's all it is, folks. It's a forecast. So keep in mind that the important time is at 10 o'clock, 10.15, and the secondary time is 11.45. 11.45 will be the key one because you'd like that one to be higher than the low. But this has nothing to do with price, boys and girls. This is only, that blue line is only time. It has no idea the price of the thing. It's all, it's a pure timing cycle and it's based on a whole lot of research so it's not nice to fool mother nature sometimes they work sometimes they don't let's look at the s p quickly on the 30 minute chart and we'll see where we are oh this is pretty nice we can get a rough idea there we go we get some pretty good ideas here and that will tell us that we are looking at write these down folks these should be pretty interesting you want to look at the s p at 29.94 let me get the chart up we'll take a look at it and now all i'm doing now is I'm taking the time frame of this. Let's get this up here. And I'm trying to see where the uh, where the prices are going to go at that time. So I'm looking at $29.94. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us. Not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probability, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, Ruby asked us to take a look at the Russell 2000. Uh, this is uh, pretty much up to date this morning. You know that we made a 61% retracement, had a two-day sell-off, went up to the 78% retracement. But look at the divergence here, folks. Uh, this looks just like the silver 135 pattern. You made the 78% retracement. You came down. Remember now, you're having lower highs in here over the last few days when the S&P is really strong and the NASDAQ is making new highs. This is exactly the pattern that uh, Stan Russell was Stan Russell. <laughs> 
<laughs> Stan Harley was uh, telling us about this morning. So uh, that's that's very this has a very bearish connotation. Now, if the Russell gets really strong here, so far the low today has been the 1360. But if we get above that 1500 level, then that would be a bullish pattern because you've got a little bit of an ABCD structure there. So right now the Russell is the the weakest, uh, and also the Dow is doing pretty much the same thing. But the Russell is the best. Uh, to think to trade after the S&P 500, given the open interest. The open interest in the Russell is number two. S&P, of course, is number one. Then is the NASDAQ, and then the worst one to trade on open interest. And it's not worse. It's just that the open interest is less is the Dow Jones. So uh, that's the main thing. Because, you know, the Russell it trades the same tick as the Dow Jones, $5 a tick. So uh, that's why it's easy to trade good fills and great execution on that Russell. So uh, you want to watch that one because this isn't diversions market. This is market feedback that this market certainly looks like it wants to go lower. We've had lower highs ever since uh, uh, June the 11th. And uh, that's mainly what we're looking at here that seems like it's going to go a little bit lower. Now, whether it does today or not, uh, we don't know. But the good part is nobody else does either. And tomorrow, folks, is Happy Friday. We're hoping to have uh, Bill Meridian on. If he's not going to be on tomorrow, he'll be on next week. Monday, we're going to have Norman, he calls it like he sees it. Winsky from Astro Trends down in Florida will be a guest on Monday. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And I